Good morning. Hope everybody's doing good today. I am still in our classroom cleaning today. i um, going to read chapter 10 from our book. I've got gloves on because I'm trying to keep everything clean in here. So let's read chapter 10. Um, good chapter, last chapter. So now everybody's, uh, everybody's got a chance. Zek, Emma, and Tobias kind of have a chance now to make it because they've got the horse and two dogs, and that's a pretty big deal. And he's got some good advice that he got from the Indians too. So chapter 10. The two dogs ran straight to the bull as if they knew beforehand exactly where they would find it. Nip rushed in, grabbed it by the nose, and Tuck sank his teeth into its left rear leg. Zek was riding just behind them, the small horse darting effortlessly around the trees, jumping over vines. Tobias followed on the other horse. When the bull tried to break free, Nip sank his teeth in deeper, causing a trickle of blood to stain the tip of his nose. When the bull stood motionless, its eyes wild and staring downward at the dog. Tobias jumped off his horse, grabbed the bull by its horns, pulling all his strength into a twisting motion that finally sent the bull sprawling on his side. As Zach tied its legs together, they turned the, dog, they turned, the dogs turned loose and backed away. Tobias started a fire. When the flames were burning, he brightly he put the branding iron into the center, and he said, it seems to me we're doing this all wrong still, running all over the woods, making fires every time we put on a mark. We ought to build a pen down here, wait till we get five or six cows in a bunch, and then brand them all at one time. That does make sense, Zach replied. I bet you that Nip and Tuck could bring in cows themselves without no help at all from us. I already seen them do it. They can make a cow go any way they want to, and all we'd have to do is show them the pen and say, get them. We'll start a pen tomorrow. Fact is, we'll build two. We'll put them about a mile apart. That ought to be even better. I could bring him in by myself too, Papa. Other day, Ishmael made a cow walk a straight line through the brush. Seemed he knew every move that cow was going to make, and then he made it first. I think he might be part cow himself. He sure knows what a cow is going to do. When the iron glowed red, Tobias took it from the fire, pressed it into the bull's side. Smoke boiled upward from burning hair as the iron seared the letters MCI into the bull's hide. He kicked twice and tried to get up. Then Tobias released the ropes and the bull struggled to its feet and ran back off into the woods. The dogs watched attentively, waiting for a signal for them to go hunt again. Then Tobias patted one on the head and said, Go get them, dogs! Get them! And they immediately streaked away into the brush. Them dogs is a sight, ain't they, Papa? Zach said. They surely are. I don't know how we would ever get along without them. They gonna keep us, or if they keep this up, they're gonna be McIvy cows all over the place. You best put that fire out and do it real good. Seems like a fool idea to be running around building fires all over the swamp. The sound of yelping came from about a mile away, and Zek said, oh, "They got another one, Papa. Sure sounds like it. They don't even give us a chance to rest. Let's ride on over and see it." This time they did not race the horses, knowing that the dogs would hold the cow even to sundown if necessary. When they reached the spot, the dogs were running around and around a thick clump of palmetto bush, barking and growling at the same time. Tobias watched for a moment, then he said, That sure ain't no cow they got in there this time. Don't go in there yet. Could be a bear in them bushes. The dogs continued circling and growling, and Tobias took the rifle from the saddle holster. He said, Well, whatever it is, sure doesn't want to come out. Must be something besides a bear, or else the horses would have smelled him by now and put on a show. Ain't no horse nowhere going to stand still for a bear, not even Ishmael. For five minutes, the dog continued circling the bushes. Then Tobias said, we're going to have to flush it out, whatever it is. Zek, get that big stick and throw it in there. I'll keep the gun aimed. Zek dismounted, picked up a hickory limb, and Tobias said to him, don't, don't go any closer now, throw it from as far back as you can. So Zek whirled around and around, and then he released the limb. It arched upward and crashed right down in the center of the palmetto clump. Nothing happened for a moment more, and then they heard a rustling sound as if something were crawling. Then a black head peeked through a frond. A black man crawled forward, slowly watching the dogs, his eyes in pure terror. He glanced upward, and he saw the rifle pointing at him. He said, Don't shoot me, mister, and call off them critters. I don't mean no harm. His voice trembled as he spoke. Tobias and Zek were both so surprised they did nothing but stare. Finally, Tobias said, Zek, get them dogs away from him. M make them hush up. Zek called the dogs to him and held them as Tobias dismounted, the rifle still in his hand. He said, Fella, what you doing hiding in there? I could have shot, it, shot in there blind and killed you. The dogs, the black man said, his voice still shaky. They got to me before I could get up that tree, and there weren't no else for me to go. I thought they was wolves. They do look like wolves a mite, Tobias said, but they won't hurt you now. Come on out of there. We're not going to hurt you. When the black man stood up, he was even taller than Tobias, at least six and a half feet, and his forearm was as large as Tobias's thigh. He was dressed in a tattered blue shirt and had on a pair of pants that seemed to have been made from a feed sack. He appeared to be about the same age as Tobias, and he was the blackest black man Tobias had ever seen. When he spoke, his white teeth gleamed like elephant ivory. 
He said, you ain't got a little scrap of food, has you? I ain't had anything since the day before yesterday. Well, we don't have anything here, Tobias said, but there's vittles back at the house. We'll be glad to feed you. Hey, where'd you come from anyway? Oh, just south of Tallahassee. Tallahassee, Tobias repeated. You mean you walked slam down here from Tallahassee? Sure did. I've been drifting now for nigh on a year. So just, you know me and my maps. Let's just look at the map up here. So um, this, uh, this shows us where the homestead is where this little house is. Where's the house? Oh boy, I can't even see where the... Okay, so the homestead is here. That's the McIvy homestead. I don't know if you can see that. And they're kind of up there at the top. Tallahassee's like over here. So he walked all the way from there. That's a long walk. Okay. All right. So anyways, um, so he said, I sure did. I've been drifting now for about a year. I've been shot at, stomped on, chased by dogs, but this is the first time I've actually been treated by wolves. They ain't wolves, Zach said, listening curiously. They's dogs. Well, you could have fooled me. I would have swore for God they was wolves. Tobias said, well, I'm Tobias McIvy, and that's my boy, Zek. Who are you? Skillet. Your name is Skillet? That's all I've ever been known as, Skillet. Well, Skillet, I sure would like to hear what you've got to say for yourself, but I know you're about to starve, so let's go ahead and get to the house and get your belly, fur get your belly full first, and then we'll talk. That sounds fine, but just don't let them wolves get to me. They ain't wolves, Zek said. They're dogs. Their names are Nip and Tuck, and they can catch any cow you've ever seen. Oh, I just bet they can, Skillet said. Tobias watched the man as he wolfed down the bowl of stewed squash and then chomped down a fried coon leg, bone and all. Emma watched, too, thinking that he was just about the hungriest man she'd ever seen. She said, well, would you like some more squash? That's just the last piece of coon meat till I cook some more. Oh, I sure would. I'd be right proud to eat another bowl. You're a fine cook, a fine one, Tobias said. As soon as I get a smokehouse built, I aim to shoot a cow. Fresh meat wouldn't keep no time at all in this heat. We'll have beef as soon as I'm done with that smokehouse. I never ate smoked cow, Skillet said, stuffing his mouth with squash. Only hog, and not much of that. Sow belly, mostly. Oh, it's right good, Tobias said. I once, I smoked, I smoked one once before when we lived in the scrub. Zek said, you ride a horse? I bet you ain't never seen a horse like Ishmael. He's a marsh tacky. Oh, I've ridden plenty of them, Skillet said. And mules, too. When I was a boy, I used to ride a goat. Turn your back on him, and he'd knock you over a fence. Zek was fascinated by this man. He said, you ever been a slave? Zek! Emma snapped. Why would you ask him a question like that? Oh, it's all right, missus. I've been that too. I was born on a plantation in Georgia. My daddy and my granddaddy, they was slaves too. When I was four years old, I was sold to a man at Tallahassee and I went to work on a farm there. I guess I'd still be a slave if it hadn't been for the war. Well, what happened to you after the war, Tobias asked. Well, when the war ended, they said we was all free and we could go do whatever we want. So some folks went north, some went south, some stayed where they was. I claimed me a little piece of land and built me a cabin on it, and then I started to farm. I had a fine garden. Wasn't long after that that some man came to my house. They said they didn't want no black man building a house or running a farm. It was all dressed in white sheets and had hoods on their faces. I told them I was supposed to be free, and I didn't see how a garden could hurt nobody. Well, anyways, they burned down my house, and they trampled my garden with their horses. Well, we got a whip that kills rabbits and squirrels and coons and rattlers. Want to see it, Skillet? Zack! Emma grinned again. He don't want to see no whip. Hush up now and let Skillet talk. We want to hear. Well, that's about the end of it, Skillet said. I guess it should have turned north instead of south. They don't seem to be nothing down here but woods and swamps. You're the first white folks that ever gave me a meal. Where are you going to go from here, Tobias asked. I don't know. I don't even know where I am at now. So far as I know, there ain't nothing in the far... Oh, Tobias said, so far as I know, there ain't nothing in the far south but swamp and Indians. I never met a white man who's been there. It was Indians down there who gave us the marsh tacky and the dogs. They were Seminoles. Well, how come they did that, Skillet said. Well, we done them a favor once. Hey, Skillet, I got an idea. Why don't you stay on here for a while? You'd be a big help to me and Zek. We couldn't pay you nothing because we ain't got nothing, but we could build you a little cabin to stay in. The garden ought to come in soon, and then you could help me with the smokehouse, and we'll get us a cow. You mean you'd let me stay here, Skillet asked, not sure he was hearing what Tobias said. What do you say, Emma? Tobias asked. It's fine with me. He'd be a big help to you and Zek, and that's just as easy for me to cook for four as three. Won't be no bother at all. So will you stay, Tobias asked. I sure will, Tobias said, or Skillet said, grinning and, f grinning and flashing his teeth. I'm awful tired of drifting. I'm beholden to you, Mr. Tobias, and to you, Mrs. Emma. I never knowed them wolves was doing me such a favor by putting me in them bushes. 
They ain't wolves, Zach said. They're dogs. And then he turned to Papa and said, Can Skillet ride your horse, Papa? I found an eagle nest down by the river and I want to show it to him. It's got babies in it. Can he, Papa? He could ride whenever he wants. Zach jumped up and said, Come on, Skillet. You better watch that big old horse. He ain't no marsh tacky. He runs straight and if you don't watch him, he'll knock you clean off into a tree. Then he, he reached the door. Skillet turned around and said, Soon as we come back, we're going to start on that smokehouse, Mr. Tobias. It won't take us no time at all to build one. No time at all. Zach grabbed his arm and pulled him out the door saying, Come on, Skillet, come on. Tobias and Emma were both smiling. Well, sounds like they made a friend and somebody to help him out around there. Skillet, that's a funny name.